And as usual, let us bring our attention to the graphic on my right. In which case, pay specific attention. Now, this is in regard to cancer immunotherapies. But pay specific attention to that survival graph down below. And what we're looking at is sufficient magnesium levels versus low magnesium levels. Now, the study itself, although in reference to basically the outcome in regard to cancer immunotherapies, is highly serendipitous because it's going to function uh, primarily on the efficacy or basically the importance of magnesium, especially in regard to T-cells. Now, you're going to start seeing T-cells become more predominant uh, as time moves forward, especially as the argument changes from antibodies to T-cells themselves in regard to current events. But to proceed as follows, that is very significant. And that is what the researchers wanted to basically delve into and find out why magnesium plays such an incredible role in regard to survival, at least in reference to cancer immunotherapies, although anything that involves T-cells, magnesium is going to play a huge role. Let us proceed as follows. Magnesium is essential for the immune system, including the fight against cancer. This level of magnesium in the blood is an important factor in the immune system's ability to tackle pathogens and cancer cells. Researchers have reported that T cells need a sufficient quantity of magnesium in order to operate efficiently. Their findings may have important implications for cancer patients. And of course, we can make that spectrum a lot broader as we begin to look at the, how important T cells are for a variety of other issues or challenges. Specifically, as we proceed forward, Magnesium is important for the function of a T-cell surface protein called LFA, lymphocyte function associated antigen-1. LFA-1 acts as a docking site, which plays a key role in the activation of T-cells. Quote, however, in the inactive state, this docking site is in a bent conformation and thus cannot officially bind to infected or abnormal cells. Explain to the researcher. This is where magnesium comes into play. If magnesium is present in sufficient quantities in the vicinity of the T cells, it binds to the lymphocyte function associated antigen-1 and ensures that it remains in an extended and therefore active position. It sounds so rudimentary in its mechanics, basically not, it's bent, can't dock, and it straightens it out. You get the picture, but to proceed, the fact that magnesium is essential for the functioning of T-cells may be a highly significant finding for modern cancer immunotherapies. These therapies aim to mobilize the immune system, in particular cytotoxic T-cells, to fight cancer cells. In experimental models, the research were able to show that the immune response of T-cells against cancer cells was strengthened by an increase in the local magnesium concentration in tumors. Now, obviously, the researchers also alluded to uh, basically the need for further research in regard to how to increase those tumor concentrations in regard to the tumor cells themselves. Yet still just the same, you saw the graph prior, the difference between survival between sufficient magnesium levels and low magnesium levels. But to proceed, using data from previously completed studies of cancer patients, the researchers were able to show that immunotherapies were less effective in patients with insufficient levels of magnesium in their blood. And that was an understatement when you look at that particular chart or the survival analysis, I should say. So basically, this is profound in its impact alone. When you take into account, uh, basically uh, courtesy of Pharmacy Times, that since 2020, half of the population in the United States is deficient in magnesium. And of course, we have other immune challenges proceeding throughout our society or population. Magnesium may be just a higher standard, if not higher, than elements such as vitamin D, selenium, zinc, so on and so forth. Especially since magnesium's primary part is in helping that T cell basically straighten out LFA-1 in a very mechanistic approach. So magnesium is a huge role. And also too, keep in mind as well, magnesium is required for the activation of vitamin D. So you almost could think of magnesium as a foundational element which helps everything else work better. Just food for thought. But however though, again, a link will be to the research as is. This information could help a tr 
basically just anybody on a global scale. It's actually pretty cool. Now, I'm not recommending dosaging and so on and so forth. I think they were alluded to 420 milligrams. Uh, in the pharmacy times, is a sufficient amount, but that could change depending on different challenges, medications, and interactions, and so on and so forth. But still, just the same. It is an incredible, serendipitous uh, study at the right time, at the right place, so it basically could help everybody that wants help in reference to strengthening the immune system with doing something simple as basically talking to the medical professional, but you know what I mean, incorporating magnesium in their diet at least at the recommended daily allowance, if not more. But to proceed as follows, gratitude to the researchers. This stuff is cool. It sounds innocuous on the surface, but again, when you look at the activation of T-cells requiring magnesium, and mark my words, you start seeing t cell pop up a lot over the couple of weeks, and it's gonna be pretty incredible. Gratitude to the researchers. I am humbled that you watch, and as a side note, if you made it this far, uh, I will be gone uh, traveling for the next 30 days, so I like to regiment everything, like once every Tuesday, once every Wednesday, or whatever it is. So I have to break that trend for about the next month, because I got a lot of traveling to do for this next period of time until March. Again, gratitude to you as well. And thank you and see you all next time. Bye.